Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that you stand to your feet and help us worship with this final song. Hallelujah, Jesus. I know the word is about to come forth, so let's go before the Lord in true worship and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error. So felt his word a thrill of hope, though weary world rejoices for yonder break a new and glorious morn.
Come on, let's give him a praise. Come on, lift your voice and magnify him. Come on, lift your voice and magnify him. You can do better than that. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people. Come on and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Fall on your knees. Oh, we thank you for your presence that we feel right now. Lord, we thank you, God, for your power and your presence, God, your glory. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would prick hearts today. God, that you would uplift, God, encourage in the name of Jesus. Save, heal, and deliver, Lord. Lord, and we thank you, God, we glorify you. Lord, I submit myself under your hand, God, and your spirit. Have thine own way, Lord. Have your way. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you can stand just for a little while longer for the reading of the word, Isaiah 9 and 6. Isaiah 9 and 6. Isaiah chapter 7 and 14. Matthew chapter 1 and 23. Amen. To everybody, we say praise the Lord to the holiday crowd. Amen. We thank the Lord. Amen. For being here in the house of the Lord. Amen. We had a long day yesterday. Amen. But I thank the Lord. Amen. And it was an honor and a privilege. Amen. To be a part of, amen, Elder Huggins' home going service yesterday. Amen. Truly, we thank the Lord for the time that he gave us with them. Amen. I want to give honor, amen, and a shout out to all those that served yesterday. Amen. You did an excellent job. Amen. From the beginning to the end, amen, staying and helping, cleaning up, and even helping the Haitian church set up for their service today. Amen. I am greatly appreciative. Amen. And it's an honor to serve with you all. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9 and 6. Amen. It says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and the increase of his government. Amen. It says, in the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. Amen. From henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah 7 and 14 says, therefore... The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Matthew chapter 1 and 23 says, and this is a fulfillment of that scripture. It says, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. 
Let's read Matthew 1 and 21, 23 all together one more time. It says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I'm going to read one more in your hearing verse, Matthew 20, Matthew 2 and 2. It says, saying, amen, that he is, that is, he, where he is, that is born king of the Jews. But we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And are come to worship him want to minister, I won't keep you long in Jesus' name. If the Lord keeps you, then that's him, not me. But I want to minister, amen, a night to remember. A night to remember. A night to remember. It's the Christmas season, amen, is a time of love, happiness, and spending time with your loved ones. It's Amen. Cherishing moments that will last a lifetime. Amen. For children, it is a time of when they can ask for their favorite toys, toys without getting a resounding no from their parents. But it is strongly, amen, considered because of the season, amen, that is called Christmas, the holiday season. Amen. I remember my father sometimes, some Christmas Eve's, Amen. He would work, amen, the shift, the, th the third shift, amen, at rider trucking, amen, and he would come home early in the morning, and me and my older brother would be up, amen, and we would be peeping around the corner and see him carrying bags into the house, amen. I remember, amen, sometimes he would catch us and tell us to go back to our room, amen, but then there are other times he didn't see us as he, we saw him bringing them into the house, Amen. Bringing them into the house after working a long shift. I thank the Lord for having a father, amen, that's willing to work to provide for his children. Amen. But listen, he would come into the house, amen, and he would gather, amen, those bags and he would, amen, bring them, amen, and put them around the fireplace. Amen. Oftentimes they went unwrapped, praise God. Amen. But I thank the Lord, amen, for him, amen, being so considerate and a loving father to provide, amen, things that we were asking for. Amen. And I remember sometimes he would go in his room, amen, and we would, amen, come out and we had this little register heater, amen, and me and my brothers and sisters would gather around and put our little feet on the heater, amen, in anticipation, hoping, praying, and believing that we got exactly what we asked for. Amen. I remember one year, praise God, amen, we asked our father for a Super Nintendo. Amen. And I remember we went to the front. He probably don't even remember this, but we went to the front, amen, when they gave us the okay, and that Super Nintendo was not there. Amen. But we were super, amen, disappointed, amen, until we heard a noise going on downstairs in the basement. Amen. We heard the theme song of Super Mario Brothers playing so loud that we can hear. Amen. I remember, amen, we ran downstairs and we had this little tube TV. Amen. Excuse me. It was not little, but it sat on the floor. It was a big tube TV that had maybe three or four buttons. Amen. And some of y'all may not remember this. Amen. But it had a volume up, a volume down, a power and one channel button. Amen. It was the type of TV that if you missed your channel, you had to go all the way back around until you got to the channel that you wanted to. Amen. And dad had this hooked up to the tube TV. Praise God. And amen. I remember we were so excited and so happy. Amen. I remember we was just screaming to the top of our lungs because we were so excited. Amen. And we probably played that game. Amen. For three days straight, almost no sleep until we beat the whole game and it was on to the next 
Amen. But I remember during those times as a kid, as it was, amen, such a joyous and happy time, amen, to be a child. It was, amen, a time spent with family and friends. We would get up and we would go over our grandmother's house. We would go over, amen, grandmother Ruthie May's house. And then we would go over, amen, to Daddy Young, amen, and grandmother Elizabeth's house. Amen. We would go over to, amen, Ruthie May's house and she would have a $2 bill for every last one of us every single year. Amen. And then we would go over, amen, my dad's family house and she, amen, because it was so many of us, she would all give us, amen, all a pair of socks. Amen. Amen. And truth be told, we was kind of disappointed because we wanted more than socks. But I thank the Lord for some socks because, amen, I realized as an adult that socks are hard to come by. Amen. Some of you know this, they got children. Amen. Your kids just steal your socks and you can't never find none. I asked Sister Fields, amen, where are my socks at? I look at the boys and they just got them on. Amen. But listen, amen, I remember, amen, it was happy times. It was, amen, happy times. And we know that Christmas also is a time that is crazy. It's a time with heavy traffic. It's a time where people, amen, are rude as people are going to the stores trying to get the toys that they want for their children, trying to bind their spouse that favorite, amen, toy or that that favorite or the, uh, uh, thing that they want, amen, they they bombard the stores, amen, until there's almost nothing left on the shelf. Or maybe you're like, amen, some other people in 2023, amen, that do all of their shopping online. And when you look at, amen, houses on your block, you just see boxes after boxes that just start piling up, amen, as people are doing their Christmas shopping. Praise God, amen. It's a time where you can ride down the street, amen, and you can see the Christmas lights. Is they're just lighting up the nighttime sky, amen. I saw, amen, as there was a house in New York City, praise God, where they had, amen, 720,000 lights lighting up, amen, their block. And people were traveling all around the country to go see this house and the lights, amen, as it lit up the whole block, praise God. And the only thing that I can think about is the electric bill, amen. I know that it's through the roof, amen, amen. Amen, is this is a time, praise God, where you walk into people's houses. And amen, I know some of you do this, amen, during this time. It's the Christmas season. So, amen, you walk into people's houses and all you hear is Christmas songs like Jingle Bells and It's a Winter Wonderland. You hear it, amen, walking in people's houses. And sometimes you even walk in people's houses and truly it looks like a winter wonderland as they got it decked out, amen, on the outside and on the inside, people just go Christmas crazy. They go Christmas crazy. It's, it's a big deal, praise God. It's so big that, amen, people do Christmas in July. Some of you probably do it, amen. They did a survey, amen, just a few years ago, and they said, when is the best time to start listening to Christmas music, amen? And the consensus came back, and it said December the 26th. In other words, what they were saying is every day of the year is a good day to listen to Christmas music, amen? I disagree with that, praise God, but there are people, amen, that truly believe that Christmas should be every single day of the year, amen, because of what is it represents, amen, it represents family, it represents happiness, it rep represents a joyous time, amen. It's a time where people that don't that don't hardly see each other throughout the year, they gather together, amen, around tables and they eat good food, praise God, and they share lives together, amen. But let me tell you something today, amen. I'm not against any of that stuff, amen. I get excited when it's time to spend time with family and I love to see, amen, the look on my children's face when they get the things that they want, but amen, listen, we ought to remind our children that there's a greater reason for the season. There's a greater reason for the season. Turn and tell your neighbor there's a greater reason for the season. 
there's a greater reason for the season. Amen. As it happened one night long ago, long before Christmas ever was a thing. Amen. It was that one night that literally changed everything for everybody that's in the room today. It was that one night, amen, that opened up what was a shut door for all humanity. It was a night where the greatest blessing and the biggest gift that any of us can ever receive, amen, came on to the scene. That's the reason why it it is a night that you ought not to forget. But every day, not just during the holiday season, you ought to remember, amen, this night every day that you get up. Because this is a night when every promise can became a reality. This is a night when all of the prophets and everything that they spoke, amen, came and stepped into reality. It was a night when the word literally became flesh. It was a night when the word literally became flesh. It was a night when the creator stepped into the created. It was a night that Paul told the Galatian church when he said in the fullness of time, when all hope was lost for humanity, God came and there was a child that was born. There were men was many children, uh, children that was born on that night, uh, many having purpose and destiny. Uh, but hear me, my brothers and sisters, uh, the child that was in the manger was more than just a baby. Uh, he was more than just a child born with purpose, uh, but he was a child that was the giver of purpose himself. He was a child, amen, that was a giver of purpose himself. John said, amen, in John's gospel, he said, amen. He said, there was a light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And he said, John the Baptist was the one that was sent to bear witness of that light. It was on that night that the light came into the world. It was on that night, praise God, where John said the word became flesh. It literally was sitting there in the manger breathing, probably crying, praise God. Amen. It was a night that we ought not to forget got to understand that all the known world was active at that time as many people were focused on traveling to the birth cities. Amen. Traveling to be taxed and counted by the Roman Empire. As Augustus Caesar amen declared to the all known world that they were to be taxed. As I believe praise God that that was amen orchestrated by God and God set that up. Amen. As some of you amen may know this or maybe you don't, but God will literally allow things to happen because he's trying to bring you to his perfect will. Praise God. Some of you may be asking God questions of why this thing happened, why this door was shut, why this thing took place in my life, but I've come to tell you today that you ought to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Come on, turn and tell your neighbor, trust in the Lord uh, with all of your heart. Uh, and the scripture said to lean not into your own understanding. Uh, when you take that approach, then you understand uh, that God has got a grand plan in it all. Even though uh, it may feel like your back is against the wall, praise God. Uh, God even has a reason for pinning you in that position. Uh, have you ever considered the reason why God uh, has got you between a rock and a hard place? Uh, it's because he wants to show you his power. He wants to show you uh, his power. I know, praise God, uh, this might not have anything to do with the message today, uh, but the children of Israel backs were against the sea, uh, amen, and they were staring the Egyptian army in the face. Uh, it seemed like there was no way out, uh, but let me tell you something. God knows how to make a way uh, when there seems to be no way. Uh, listen. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give the Lord some praise. God desire is to not, amen, amen, not just leave you where you're at, but God always has an expected end for you. God always has a plan, even when he allows your whole world to fall apart. I've come to tell you today that when God causes your whole world to fall apart, you can rest assured that he's getting ready to walk in between your broken pieces, and he's going to put you back together better than you were before. If God called it to fall apart, it 
it wasn't meant to be, but God has got something better. Turn and tell your neighbor he's got something better. He's got something better, but as Mary and Joseph were in Galilee, amen, in the city of Nazareth at the time, the Bible says that Joseph is the lineage of David, and he had to travel to his own city in Bethlehem. He thought he was just doing his duty as a citizen of Israel, following the rules of the Roman Empire, but can I tell you, the Lord had already made it known where he was going to make his grand entrance about four to five hundred years before as most people would think that God would choose Jerusalem because that was the place where he said he was going to put his name there. No, 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 but it was about five miles if you check, amen, on Google Maps down the road in a little town called Bethlehem, amen, as it was prophesied by Micah in Micah 5 and 2 when he said, for out of thee shall come forth, amen, unto me that is to be the ruler of Israel who is going to go forth from old. He said from everlasting. You got to understand praise God. Amen. When we look at the manger situation I know we see it amen all throughout our country as people line it up to look real nice and it looks like it was a really beautiful scene. Amen. The nativity scene as you see it everywhere. You can go up off of 86 and Westfield Boulevard. They got a huge huge scene out there uh, that looks so beautiful and glamorous uh, but can I tell you praise God uh, that it's not as glamorous as you think it was uh, how many of you will sleep in a cow stall I don't think that's nobody, amen, that would sleep in a cow stall, praise God, amen. How many of you would sleep in a pig's pen, pen, praise God? How many of you would lie with the sheep, praise the Lord, amen? The manger experience, amen, or the scene, amen, was not the glamorous thing that we all think it is, praise God, amen. But Christ was literally born amongst the animals, praise God. That's how low he lowered himself. So when the, amen, when the apostles, said that he made of himself no reputation. He chose the manger over the palace. He chose the manger over the palace. He lowered himself a little lower than the angels, praise God. He could have chosen anywhere in the world to be born, but he humbled himself to a manger. And the Bible says because, amen, all of the world was in travel, that there was no more room in the inn, so they gave them a little stall in the manger, praise God. Can I stop right here and tell you that they were so busy that they didn't even make room for our Savior, God forbid, praise God, that we get so busy in our lives that we can't move, make room for Jesus. We can't make room for his mission. We ought to lift your hands and just worship the Lord right now. Can I tell you that there are people uh, that are just so busy that God is trying to get their attention, uh, but they're so caught up with the transient of life uh, that they can't hear God through the noise. Uh, but can I tell somebody today, you got to unbusy yourself. Uh, sit yourself down somewhere. Uh, shut the television off uh, and let the Lord speak to you. Turn and tell your neighbor, you got to let the Lord speak to you uh, because God's trying to tell you something in this season. Uh, you got answers. Hey Amen. You got questions. Uh, God's got an answer, but let me tell you something. Uh, you're not going to get the answer just going throughout the transient of life, uh, not slowing yourself down. Uh, you're not going to get the answer going into your prayer closet uh, and just keep your mouth opening up, uh, spewing everything that you've got on God uh, and never being silent and letting God speak, uh, but you got to sit yourself down. Uh, you got to close your mouth uh, and say, Lord, here am I. But he lowered himself, uh, amen, to, to, to be born amongst the animals, praise God. Uh, think about this, the king of kings that created all things, uh, lowered himself to the manger. He didn't even bother to orchestrate, amen, himself to be born uh, in a proper room. Uh, but he was born in the manger and not a palace, praise God, uh, amen. But listen, preceding his birth, uh, he sent forth an angel. Angel to give word to the country.
country shepherds uh, who were taking care of their flocks nearby. Uh, and they told him, they said, uh, we bring great tidings of joy. Uh, he said, which shall be for all people. Uh, amen. He said that this day uh, in the city of David, a Savior is born uh, as Christ the Lord. Uh, amen. He told them, praise God, uh, and gave them this message. And at the end of him talking uh, in Luke chapter 2 and 14, the Bible says uh, that the angels begin to praise and magnify God, uh, glorify and amen. Glory, he said, glory to God in the highest uh, and all the earth peace, uh, goodwill towards man. Can I tell you uh, that if it was just an ordinary baby that was in the manger, praise God, uh, they wouldn't have commanded the attention of all of heaven. Uh, amen. Listen, uh, heaven rejoices when one sinner repents. Uh, but can I tell you a baby that's born into the world uh, don't know nothing about no repentance. Uh, so that baby, amen, that was born in the manger, uh, it was more than just an ordinary child, praise God. Uh, but can I tell you, praise God, uh, that that baby was that was born in the manger uh, was God manifested in the flesh. Uh, the angels didn't quite understand uh, why they were commanded, amen, uh, to give praise and honor to that baby, praise God. Uh, but can I tell you uh, that that baby that was born in the manger uh, was God Almighty uh, enacting his grand plan uh, to die for our sins. He lowered himself being made lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Uh, he came into the world for one purpose uh, that he had in mind before the foundation of the world. Uh, can I tell you that this plan, amen, uh, was not just something that happened in the moment, uh, but the Bible literally says before the foundation of the world, uh, a lamb was slain. Uh, it was already in the mind of God uh, that in the volume of the book he was going to make his grand entry for you and I in that night. That's why we got to remember it. There were Gentile wise men who came from the east to Jerusalem asking all who would listen, where is the king that is to be born? For we have seen his, his star in the east, having come to worship him. Can I tell you that the astrologers today are still trying to figure out what made that star that night so special. Amen. But what they fail to realize is that's not just some ordinary star, praise God, because that baby that was in the manger was not just some ordinary baby, praise God. You go and look on Time Magazine and National geographics every single year uh, and they ask the question they say who was Jesus Christ uh, and some would say he was just a man and some would say uh, he was just the son of God and some would say uh, amen that he just came to be the sacrifice some people say uh, that he was uh, just a good man to come and work miracles uh, amen but let me tell you something today uh, that Jesus Christ was more than just a man uh, he was more than just the son of God am I in the right church. Uh, he was more than just the son of God, uh, but he was God manifested in the flesh. Uh, as the Bible says over and over again, uh, as he announces to the world exactly who he is. Uh, so that baby that was born in the manger was not just some uh, ordinary baby. That's the reason why the angel said uh, that holy thing. That holy thing, they called him the son of the highest. They called him a child of the Holy Ghost because that child was the fulfillment of what Isaiah saw a few hundred years before when he said that, man, that child that was to be born, his name was to be called Emmanuel, which to be interpreted God with us. So when the angel came and he was telling Joseph, he said, thou shalt call his name Jesus and thou shalt save his people from their sins. If he was just talking about Jesus as just being a man, he would be talking about just the Jews that he came to save. That's what the Jews thought. That's why they wanted him to be the king. That's the reason why in the book of Acts, they said, now, Jesus, are you going to restore the kingdom back to Israel but can I tell you uh, that he didn't just come for the Jews, uh, but he came to die for the sins of the whole world. Uh, he came to die for you and I. Uh, he came to snatch. He 
came to snatch that star that was in the sky. That was a sign that the Lord had placed there himself. I thank the Lord that God does things his way and not our way. Don't you know that God can do what he wants to? God can hang the moon and stars wherever he wants to. He can cause any star to shine brighter than any other if he wants to. He can split the Red Sea if he wants to. He can clear out your bank account if he wants to. And he can fill it back up if he wants to. He can snatch your job today and give you a better one tomorrow. God does what he wants to. I don't know why God does the things that he does sometimes. But one thing I can say, I thank the Lord that he's on my side. Turn and tell your neighbor, I thank the Lord that he's on my side. Because if he won't know my side, I don't know where I would be. Amen. I might be in a devil's hell right now. I might be on drugs, praise God. I might be hung up on a bottle of alcohol. But because God saw me, he snatched me out of the pit that I was in. And it started on that night. It started on that night. Amen. It started on that night. The virgin birth was a miraculous thing. Amen. It, he came and he died for you and I. The reason why we're here today is because of what he did starting that night. It was on that night. You got to understand, we talk about the old rugged cross. But before you get to the old rugged cross, you got to go to the humble manger. Amen. We talk about what he did on Calvary. Amen. But it started that night. <laughs> we stand off. If unto us a child is born, and unto us a son was given, he said, the government shall be upon his shoulders, that baby that was born in the manger, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. There's nobody like our God. <laughs> Amen. There are many people that say uh, that Jesus is not God. Uh, but when I read the word, this right here, uh, I am convinced that when he said he was the mighty God, he's not talking about uh, another God because God said uh, there is no other God beside me. Uh, he said there's none around me. If, I, if there is one, I don't even know uh, who they are. Praise God. Uh, so that baby that was born in the manger, praise God. God. He was not another God, but he was God uh, that created everything. Uh, he was the God, praise God, uh, that provided water out of a rock in the wilderness. Uh, he was the God that we say he's the me wheel uh, in the middle of the wheel. Uh, he's the same God uh, that was born in that manger. Uh, is the same God that's coming back uh, to make war with him. <laughs> Wonderful. Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. It was on that night, Brother Shepherd, that the all supreme God had lured himself to the manger just for us to become a sacrifice for you and I. Because one day he would know. I will come to a church and I will be sick and tired of being sick and tired. I remember when I came in to the church house, praise God. I remember I was messed up, tore up from the flow up. Amen. And I remember like it was yesterday, I can feel the pulling of the Lord pulling me to repentance, pulling me to get my life together. I thank the Lord because April 26, 2009, he saved my soul. But can I tell you uh, before that day he came uh, in the manger amen uh, and all of the angels began uh, to celebrate uh, the born king that it came uh, the star was hanging in the sky uh, astrologers don't know why that star shines so bright uh, but what they didn't understand uh, is that that baby uh, was God manifested in the flesh uh, that baby came to die You just lift your hands and just worship him right now. 
Come on, just worship him. Come on, worship him. You got to understand, on that night, the strong tower stepped in. It was on that night that every promise uh, that you're still holding on to, uh, that night is a remembrance that God keeps his promises. Every prophecy, every word that was spoken, uh, every point of the law uh, pointed to that baby that was in the manger. Uh, I'm reminded of when Jesus said, uh, I come not to, amen, to condemn the law, uh, but I came to fulfill it. You want to know why? Because he was the giver of the law himself, uh, and he wasn't going to break his own law. Uh, so he kept all to 613 points, uh, even to the time of his death, uh, because does he know? Every promise. Every prophecy, Brother Cardi. I could just imagine as they were looking at the baby in the manger, wondering what's on the inside. They beheld the one that created all things. The scripture says that we have redemption through his blood. And by him all things were created. Whether they be dominions, thrones, principalities, you name it. He created it. <laughs> the greatest lowered himself. The greatest act of love was seen right there in the manger. He said, sacrifices of blood and bullocks thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. It was in the manger that they're looking at literally the body that God prepared to purchase you and I with his own blood. <laughs> That's why we ought to remember it every single day. Every day that we get up, we ought to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for being a keeper of your promises. Uh, God, thank you, Lord. Come on, could you just talk to him, worship him right now? I'm finished. Come on. Come on, I told you I wasn't going to keep you long. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, talk to him. Come on, talk to him. Come on, come on. Come on, I know tomorrow you're going to be gathered around your family. You're going to enjoy some laughter, play some games. Uh, you're going to enjoy time spent with your loved ones. Uh, but let us not forget why we come together in the season. Uh, long before there was a Christmas, uh, amen, there was a Jesus that was born in the manger. Uh, there was a God that came down uh, and he saw you and I needed a Savior. So he prepared himself a body. And he showed up in the manger to show us how, how humble we ought to be as sons of God. As the scripture said that he made of himself no reputation, but he came in the form of a servant. And you see it right there in the manger. Amen. A place where it's not conducive for anybody. But he's there. Come on, talk to him. Come on, can you pray? I want you to grab the person's hand to you and I will next to you and I want you just to begin to pray. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> In that manger, that baby's there. They're beholding the one that's got the greatest name. <laughs> They're beholding the one that bears the name that was given to men whereby we must be saved. They're beholding. They're, they're being, they can see it with their physical eyes. They witnessed it from the word, Genesis through Malachi, but here he is in the manger. Hallelujah. He's there. 
He's ready to save, ready to heal, ready to deliver, ready to set free, ready to raise the dead, ready to teach kingdom principles, uh, ready to make disciples. Uh, he's right there in the manger. This is the reason why we celebrate. This is the reason why we ought to fail not to teach our children. I know you want the gifts. I know this is a joyous and happy time. Amen. But listen, the reason for the season is because Christ came and he was born into the world to die for our sins. This is the reason why we celebrate. This is the reason why we come into the house of God every week. He's the reason for the season. You take away Christmas, he's still the reason. You take away the gifts, he's still the reason. You take away all the joy that this season brings, and there's still a reason to have joy because he came into the world. The joy doesn't come, amen, from family. The joy doesn't come from the gifts. The joy doesn't come from the food. The joy doesn't come from the season of holidays. But the joy comes from the fact that he came into the world. The one that is the bearer of joy. As the scripture says, it's in his presence is the fullness of joy. That's the reason why you can have joy when it seems like you got nothing. You can have joy when everything is falling apart. Because the real joy of the Lord doesn't come from stuff. It doesn't come from seasons. It doesn't come from gifts. But joy comes from the Lord. Joy comes from the Lord. Joy comes from Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, keep talking to him right now. Come on, is there somebody that needs some joy in your life? Come on, if you need some joy, I want you to meet me at the altar right now. This is for those that need some joy in your life. You might be in a place, praise God, where you feel like you can't find no joy, can't find no peace, can't find, praise God, no relief. But I've come to tell you today that the one that is the giver of joy, he's here to give it to you. He's here to Come on, church. I need you to pray right now. There are people that are here at the altar. They come because they need some joy. Can I get some ministers just begin to pray for these people that are at the altar? I'm telling you right now that God wants to do a work. Come on, church. Come on, church, as you're coming. Uh, come on, I want you to lift your hands, and I want you just to begin to talk to God. Uh, come on, I'm telling you uh, that if you confess what you're dealing with before God, uh, if you've got sin and iniquity in your life, uh, you ought to say, God, uh, I've dealt in some sin, Lord. Uh, I've got some issues going on, uh, but I've come to tell you today uh, that all of heaven uh, was rejoicing that night uh, because of the child that was born in the world. Uh, and there's one other time that you find it in scriptures uh, where the Bible says uh, that heaven begins to rejoice uh, and that's when one sinner uh, begins to repent. Uh, I'm telling you right now that when you repent before the Lord, uh, all of heaven begins to rejoice. All of heaven uh, begins to rejoice uh, because you're turning away from wicked ways. Uh, all of heaven begins to rejoice. Uh, and the scripture says, uh, for the people of God, uh, if my people, uh, which are called by my name, uh, would turn from their wicked ways, uh, if there's a saint of God uh, that you've got some wicked ways, uh, I'm telling you how you open up uh, the windows of heaven uh, is you turn. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven and I'll hear their land. I'm telling you today that heaven wants to rejoice. Heaven wants to open up. But you've got to be willing to open up and give your sin, give your iniquitous behavior over to Jesus. I'm telling you uh, that as you do it, uh, you'll feel God begin to lift things off of you. Uh, you'll feel God begin to lift burdens off of you. Uh, there's some of you in the room today. Uh, there's burdens that's upon your life. Uh, but I'm telling you, uh, the Lord will give you something better. 
he'll give you something better. He said, come on, see me, all you that are burdened and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I'm telling you today that he's got a rest for your soul. He said, take upon you my yoke and my burden, because it's easy and it's light. You've been carrying the burdens of sin, but I've come to tell you that God wants to give you something in exchange for your burden of sin. He wants to give you victory. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you peace that passes all understanding. But you've got to give all of your issues over to him. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, the presence of the Lord is here. Come on, church. Come on, church. I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord is here. There are people that are breaking in the presence of the Lord right now as God is doing a work. I'm telling you, there are some people in here today that you've been bound up in perversion, but I've come to tell you that the Lord said perversion is not your portion, but God wants to give you freedom and liberty. God wants to give you freedom I'm telling you, uh, the enemy has perpetrated on you, uh, but God wants to wrap you uh, in his loving arms uh, and free you from it. Come on, church. Come on, church. I'm telling you, the spirit of the Lord is here. The spirit of the Lord is here. Can I get some prayer warriors just to begin to pray? Come on, if you're in your seat, I want you to lift your voice and just begin to call on the name of the Lord. Come on, we need to go to war in the spirit. There's some people up here right now that got some real issues and some real devils that's fighting them. But I'm telling you today that if we bombard heaven on their behalf, half uh, God will do a work In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come on church, come on church. I'm telling you, Pentecost is going to happen today. Pentecost is going to happen. The winds of Pentecost is flowing. Come on church, I need some people that's beginning to pray. And I'm telling you, God is going to fill some people with the Holy Ghost. God is going to wash away sins today. Come on church. This is why we're here. This is why we're here. This is why we remember. This is why we remember that night. Because that night made this day possible. That night made this day possible. When people can come and give God their burden of sin. That night made this day possible. Where people can be broken out of spiritual cells that have held them bound for far too long. That night made this day possible. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Brother Jeremy, no music. Come on, church. I need you to lift your voice right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're going to get out of here in a minute. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on. Come on. I need you to talk to the Lord right now. Come on. Come on, I need you to call on his name. Come on, I need you to call on his name. Come on, come on, revival is happening right now. Come on, there are souls that are hanging in the balance. There are souls that are pleading and going before the Lord, looking for God to do something in their life. Come on, church, I need you to open up your mouth and I need you to talk to him right now. Come on, I need some brothers that's willing to lift their voices as mighty men of valor and go to war in this spirit because uh, there are people right now uh, under the sound of my voice that has been under heavy attack uh, as the enemy has tried to take them out of here uh, but we bombard heaven right now on their behalf uh, and we're pushing back uh, this kingdom of darkness saying that this child uh, belongs to Jesus uh, this child this son this daughter uh, belongs to the Lord come on church
In the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Come on. Uh, I've come to tell somebody today. Uh, come on. That there's no devil in your life. Uh, that God cannot deliver you from. Uh, there's no enemy. It doesn't matter how long. Uh, he's had control of your life. Uh, I'm telling you that God will sweep your house clean. Uh, God will sweep your house clean. Uh, God will do it. You got to give it over to him. Uh, you got to let that thing go. Uh, you got to let it go and give it over to Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus right now. We plead the blood of Jesus right now. Come on, we plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood over this congregation right now. Lord, I pray God a hedge of protection upon the people of God. I pray a hedge of protection upon the people of God right now, Lord. Lord, and I pray, God, that you will break the shackles and chains. God, that are holding individuals back right now. Lord, I pray God that you will break it in the name of Jesus by the power and the authority of the word of God. Lord, do a work Come on, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come on, I'm telling you right now that there are individuals in the room, come on, they're dealing with some new age stuff, some new age stuff that they don't open up the door to, but I'm telling you right now, it don't matter if it's new age, old age, or ancient age, we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is able to break every chain. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 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 Ikatama shatamaha. Yokoto yanaroma koshatamaha. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, church. If you only knew what's happening right now. If you only knew what God is up to right now. I'm telling you that the Lord is looking to set free. He's looking to deliver. He's looking to break chains and bondages right now. He's looking to set free. Hey, come on, church. Come on, come on. Come on, I'm telling you right now. Come on. Come on, I'm telling you right now. I was in a church in East Ohio, and there was a spirit that was bombarding a service. Come on, I'm telling you. And I told the church, now is not the time to play. And the pastor came to me afterwards, after we broke the back of that thing, and he said the enemy was trying to convince me that what was happening was a useless exercise, and that nothing was going to take place but he said I got an unction in the Holy Ghost to tell that devil to shut his mouth and I begin to pray in the spirit and I felt that thing break I'm telling you right now that God looks to break something in the spirit but we got to understand uh, that you don't have to always know exactly what's going on. Uh, but if you can just feel what God uh, is doing, if you can hear what the Spirit is saying, uh, and you begin to join in prayer, uh, bombarding heaven in spiritual warfare, uh, that God will break something, uh, and he might just move on your behalf uh, about something that you're not even praying about. Uh, I'm telling you, when you handle God's business, uh, he'll see about yours. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, we're getting ready to get out of here, but I want you just to begin to talk to the Lord right now all over this room. Come on, every eye closed. I want you just to talk to the Lord. If you're at the altar still praying, I want you to continue to pray. Come on, just talk to him for a few more moments. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Have your way, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we stand to our feet? I want you to continue to pray if you're at the altar. Let everybody else stay and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray out. And I'm going to ask everybody that's not praying, you can quietly exit the sanctuary after we pray. Children, you can gather in the foyer. Amen. And we have something for you. Amen. With uplifted hand, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now. Lord, we glorify and we magnify you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that your will be done, God, as we even as we depart from this place, Lord, I pray, God, that your word, God, will forever be with your people. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your will be done. Lord, we pray, God, a hedge of protection from the seen and unseen danger. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you can, amen, for those of you that are not praying, amen, I ask you to quietly exit the sanctuary. There are people still up here praying. Bless you. We love you. Children, you can gather in the foyer and we have something for you. <laughs>